In this art experience, we're going to look at Paul Klee's painting Ad Parnassam and pay homage to it. This is an activity for the upper levels and the elements that we're going to use are line, shape, colour, pattern. So when we look at the painting, we can see all these things occurring. I've got uh, warm and cool colours. I can see shape, line, mark making, repetition of the marks, which is pattern. And it looks like a house or some sort of building. The art materials that we're going to use in this lesson, there's quite a few. So we've got A3 cartridge paper, paint, glue, brayer, oil pastels that are water soluble, portfolios, a mixture of paper for collage, a ruler, gesso, and we have some mark making instruments. So the back of a brush, some wooden skewers, and a filter. So we're going to break this down into sections and I'm going to start with the, the first section which is the background. This first part of the lesson we're going to start with creating a background. So we're going to collage the papers onto our A3 cartridge paper by simply ripping and gluing them down with either PVA or a glue stick and there is no rules, they can overlap and have different types of paper to create interest. So I'm just going to rip and stick and get on with that first. Okay, so what I've done is I've just collaged parts of the background and this has taken away that white piece of paper which we don't want. But these colours and patterns are too bright and we don't want that either. We want this to be very, very subtle. So we've got these bright colours and bold shapes and now we're going to just move that back, push that back and how we're going to do that is by putting a thin layer of gesso over the top with the brayer. That's why we're not painting it. The brayer will keep it thin and then that will give us a really nice surface to work on. So I'm going to get the gesso now and put a layer of gesso with the brayer over the top of the collage. Here's the gesso. And the brayer. So students just dab a bit of the white gesso onto their work with the brush like this. And then smooth it out with the brayer. And that helps stick the work down and creates a nice background. So I'm just basically smoothing all the paint out because I want it very, very thin because I want to see the paper and I'm just going to cover the paper.
Now we let that dry. I've got another dry one here, so I'm going to change them over. But the gesso will also help stick the pieces of paper down. So that gives a nice, interesting and different background to work off. So I'm going to move that aside and take the dry one that I've already got and put it in its place. Now going back to the painting, it's a house or building shape. The students don't have to copy it directly, but we're going to try to get a, a roof shape, a sun shape and an arch door. They can be slightly different. So with a grey lead and a ruler, the students will need to create this shape with line, but they want it to run out of the page. We don't want to do the old house in the middle. So when I did this, I just started at any point at the top of the page and took my ruler and ran it out the line from the top right out to the side. Then from that point, or I can leave a bit of a flat space if I, if I want, take the ruler and again take the line so it goes out of the page. If I want to, I can create a line here or I can cut across here. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, so I'm going to take from that point and cut up to the, the roof and create another line. From this point, I'm going to go, I can go straight, I can go on an angle, but I'm going to go on a tiny angle down to the bottom. So all my lines are running out of the page, so I'm filling the page, which is quite important. And lastly, I have to make a door doorway. I'm going to just take something that's already round and I'm going to just trace around that shape so I can create that arch and run the lines down again out of the page and out of the page and for the sun shape again I'm going to take a round object and just trace around that to create a nice circle. Okay, now I'm happy with that. I have a, a shape that resembles the roof. I've got shapes and sections. So we've got our art element of shape and I've drawn it out in the line. And now we're going to add the background color. I have these very clear defined spaces and now I'm going to give it more clarity by defining it with colour. This is going to be a background colour. So we're going to use the portfolio oil pastels, which are beautiful colours and fun to use. So take these and I am going to refer back to the painting the, by Paul Clay because I'm sort of not doing the exact same colours, but I am looking at the colours that he used. So, for example, there's a quite a strong orangey bit here, so I, I'm going to put some orange. And because we've used the gesso, it gives it a really nice working surface. And then the orange sort of runs into blues and aquas, so I'm just going to do a bit of orange there and contrast it with a bit of light blue. And a little bit of this bluey green. Now I can't see what's going to happen to the colours until I activate it with water. So I'm going to do a little bit, activate it with water, do a little bit more, activate it with water until I work my way around the page. And you can see the papers are coming through and they're still going to be there very subtle but in the background. So I'm going to activate this part here. So I'm going to draw with the oil pastels and then activate it with the water, then repeat that process until I have completed the whole background.
Now where we are at at the moment is we've just finished the background. So we have strong shapes. We have a layering effect which gives texture. We have bold colours which defines the shapes and gives us a great place to build on. And that's what we're doing. We're building layers. We're working in layers. You could stop right here and display the work as is because this has some really nice things going on. And if you come up close, you can see some of the textures of the paper where the colour of the oil pastel catches and uh, the water changing and it has a really lovely soft effect. But seeing that we're paying homage to Clee's painting, we're going to address the repetitive pattern of the dots, which is also in effect light and colour playing on top. We're going to take a palette of colours and I'm going to mix a bit of warm, cool and white and I'm going to put some mark making or dots and patterns into each section. You could also use the pastels if you wanted to for a section, so that's not dark enough. I could do some dots like this. So I'm going to use the pastels in the doorway and the rest I'm going to use paint. I can use my finger, I can use the back of a brush, the filter or a skewer. So that's what I'm going to do now. Just coming to the end of the work now, I'm going to stop there. You don't have to dot paint every section in, although you can. I've done this twice, so with the first one I did, I just left the sun un undotted. And with this one, I'm leaving the whole sky. Now with the dots, I used my finger, I used the pastel, I used the end of a paintbrush, and I used the filter because I did want different size dots, which adds more interest. And if you look closely at the work, and I sometimes was mixing two paints on my finger, a white as well as the colour, and changing the colour as I worked down. And on the first one I did, I changed the size of the dots as I worked down. And that will depend, I suppose, on time and the individual student. So if you had a student that was working slower and they didn't do all the dotted section, it doesn't matter, and if someone is advanced and can cope with that, they can keep going. Then after you look at, if you look at the work, you actually have the different dots, but you can see through the dots to the background, and you will notice that there's a lovely 
subtle change of colours, a little bit of line where the oil pastel has caught the edge of the paper and sometimes a little bit of the texture coming through. So when you really look at the work, you can see that you've used all the art elements. They're mixed there together and they're complementing each other. So I can see my warm and cool palette. And I can see the pattern. I can see texture coming through. When I look back at Klee's painting, I can relate to his work a little bit more because I've gone through a process. There we have it. You've got a completed artwork. You have shown the students how to use a great diversity and variety of art equipment and techniques. We've been able to use several of the elements mixed together. We've used multimedia, different, different layering techniques. We've got the dots in different sizes with the different colours. You can see through to the background and a subtle change of colours and where the colour hits the paper you get line and on some of the papers creates a texture. So you've addressed all the art elements and you can really see the relationship between the work that your students produce and Paul Klee's. So you really have paid homage to Paul Klee.